Let's practice some coin word problems together. In each of these practice problems, let's go ahead and check out some of these coin word problems where we're gonna go ahead and use some equations to solve them. For number one, Rory has 54 coins, all of which are either nickels or dimes. The coins are worth a total of $4.25. The question is, how many dimes does Rory have? Let's go ahead and define our variables first. First, we're gonna go ahead and let n equal the number of nickels, and then we'll let d represent the number of dimes. Once we do that, I recommend setting up a quick table together. To help us organize, let's go ahead and put the nickels in this row. Then we can go ahead and put the dimes in the second row. And then underneath that, we can go ahead and say, these are gonna be the total number of coins. So those are gonna be the labels for each of the rows and for the label for each of the columns, let's go ahead and make this first column, this is gonna be the number of each of the coins. Then for the next column, let's go ahead and put the value of each of the coins. And for the last column, let's go ahead and make that the column that's gonna represent the total value of what those coins are equal to. So now that we have this all set up, we have to keep in mind that there are 54 coins in total. So let's go ahead and say how much we have in total, it's gonna to be 54 coins. Okay, now if we don't know how many dimes or how many nickels, you can actually go one of two ways here. But if we know that the number of dimes plus nickels, we can go ahead and write it over here actually on the side. If we say that we have nickels, right, plus the number of dimes, so n plus d, that's gonna equal 54, right? They have to add up to that. Now if we solve for n or put n by itself, we could go ahead and say that n would be equal to 54, subtract how many dimes there would be, or we could rearrange it in a different way and say the number of dimes would be equal to 54, take away all of the nickels. So D would equal 54 minus N. Now, either of these are okay to use, but what I'm gonna do is say for the number of nickels, the number of nickels, which is this first row, that's this N isolated by itself, is equal to 54 minus the number of dimes. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that as 54 minus the number of dimes. So I'm gonna say minus D. Right? If that's the case, what would represent dimes? Well, dimes is just represented by the letter D. So we can go ahead and put the letter D right here. Right? So we can just write these expressions so we have one variable instead of two. Now let's go ahead and see, what's the value of each coin? Well, nickels are five cents, so we can go ahead and write 0 0.05. That's the value of each nickel. And dimes are equal to 0.10 or 0.1, whatever you want to write there. To find the total value of each of these, well, let's think about it for nickels, right? It's gonna be the number of nickels times five cents each. That would get you that total value, right? So if we multiply, we can go ahead and say that's gonna be 0 0.05 per nickel times 54 minus D of those nickels. We can put minus D. We can go ahead and put that in just like parentheses. So the product of those two expressions would get us the total value of all of those nickels. Now, similarly for the dimes, we could go ahead and just take the 10 cents per dime times how many dimes there are. So we can go ahead and write 0 0.1, I'm just gonna drop the zero for now, so it's a little bit less writing. So it's gonna be 0 0.1 times however many dimes there are. For this box right over here, for the value of each coin, we don't know the total. You can't really do that just because they're different coins. Finally, keep in mind the last piece of information we were told, which was that the total value of everything was $4.25. So we can go ahead and put 4.25 for the total value of all of the money together. At this point, we can go ahead and set up an equation so that we can find out the value of D, which is gonna be the number of dimes that Rory has. Now, this is gonna be the total value of the nickels plus the total value of the dimes is equal to the total value of all of it together. So let's go ahead and write that. I'm gonna just move down a little bit here. So first we have the value of the nickels, which is gonna be 0 0.05 times this 54 minus D, which is really telling us how many uh, nickels we have. And then we're gonna go ahead and add all of the uh, value of the dimes, which is gonna be 0.1 times D. And this will equal the total value of all the coins together, which is gonna be $4.25, 4.25. Now let's go ahead and just start solving this equation. It's a multi-step equation with one variable. So it was really important in the beginning to go ahead and uh, change the number of nickels to 54 minus D. We can go ahead and distribute this 0.05 to both of these terms inside the parentheses, use that distributive property. 
Now 0 0.05 multiplied by 54, if you need to pause to think about that one, feel free to do so. I'm gonna tell you right now that's gonna be 2.7 though. Then we're gonna go ahead and subtract. We have 0 0.05 times D. We can't do anything with that, so let's do 0 0.05 D. Leave it just like that. And we're gonna go ahead and add the 0.1 D, 0 0.1 times however many dimes there are, and this will equal this $4.25. Next, we can hopefully notice that we do have some common terms here or like terms. So we can go ahead and add the uh, negative 0.05D plus the 0.1D. Now negative 0 0.05 plus 0.1 is going to be positive 0 0.05. So our new equation here we can write is gonna be 2.7 plus 0 0.05, positive 0 0.05D, and that's going to be equal to 4.25. Now we just have a two-step equation, right? We can go ahead and just do the same thing to both sides of the equation to solve it. So we wanna isolate the D. So first we can use the subtraction property of equality and take away 2.7 from both sides of the equation. So go ahead and just set that up. Now on the left side, this uh, 2.7, they're gonna go ahead and cancel out, okay? They're gonna equal zero. So on the left side, we're left with 0 0.05 multiplied by D, and that's gonna be equal to whatever 4.25 minus that 2.7 is. Now, if you need a moment to think about that, go ahead and pause. Uh, but if we subtract those decimals, we're just gonna get 1.55, okay? And then finally, we're gonna go ahead and use the division property of equality and divide the left side by 0 0.05 and divide the right side by 0 0.05. Okay, so on the left side, 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.05 is just gonna be one, so we're gonna have one D. So we can write D is equal to, and on the right side, 1.55 divided by 0 0.05 is equal to 31. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that. So we know that at this point, the number of dimes or D is equal to 31. Now, just looking back up to make sure we answered all the questions here. Uh, I think there was just one. It says, how many dimes does Rory have here? So we're just looking for the number of dimes. So I think we've done that. So we can just write in conclusion that Rory has 31 dimes. That would be our answer for this problem. Alrighty, now that we finished number one, let's take a look at number two together. All right, for number two, Bella has seven more quarters than dimes and one less nickel than dimes. Their total value is $3.70. The question is, how many of each type of coin does Bella have? So first, just like in number one, let's just go ahead and define our variables. First, we can go ahead and let N represent the number of nickels. Then let D represent the number of dimes. And finally, let Q represent the number of quarters. Now that we have each of our variables defined, let's go ahead and make a table just like we did in number one so we can organize our information. Notice how pretty much this table is identical to the one we did earlier. We're just gonna have one extra row here and we're gonna call these our quarters just because we have three coins here instead of two. Now that we have a table, let's see if we can go ahead and define some variables using some information from the problem. So it does tell us that Bella has seven more quarters than dimes. Let's try to take that piece of information and say, okay, well, seven more quarters than dimes. Well, let's see how many dimes are there. Well, if we go ahead and take the number of dimes and then we add seven to that, that would be the number of quarters. If that's true, we could go ahead and write the equation that the number of quarters is equal to the number of dimes, which is going to be Q is equal to D. And we're going to add seven onto that. A second piece of information they give us is that there is going to be one less nickel than the number of dimes. So in terms of the nickels, we can go ahead and write this equation where the number of nickels is going to be equal to the number of dimes, which is going to be represented by the variable D. And we go ahead and take one away from that or subtract one. Lastly, this is a little bit more obvious, but we can go ahead and say that D is equal to D because the number of dimes is equal to the number of dimes. So the whole goal of what we just did here is represent the number of quarters in just terms of D, so we have the variable D in terms of dimes, and then we represent the number of nickels also using the variable D, and of course the number of dimes is represented by the number of dimes, so we can go ahead and just keep that the same. So for the number of nickels, which is going to be right over here, we can go ahead and replace the number of nickels here and say that's just going to be D minus one. Go ahead and write that in this box here, D minus one. And then let's see, what about dimes? Well, dimes are equal to dimes, so that's just going to be the variable D. And then finally, for the quarters, we know quarters are equal to the number of dimes plus seven. So for this row of quarters, we can go ahead and write, we have D and then add seven onto it. In terms of the value for each coin, we know that nickels are worth five cents, so it's 0 0.05. Dimes are worth 0.10 cents or 0.1 if you wanna leave the zero off. We know quarters are worth 0 0.25 or 25 cents, and we can go ahead and leave those values just like that. 
Just like earlier for the value of the coins, we're gonna go ahead and leave this blank for now because we can't go ahead and do that because it's different for each of the coins. And then for the total values of each one, let's just go ahead and take the nickels, right? And let's multiply the value of nickels by how many nickels we have. So the expression for that, for the total value of nickels is gonna be 0 0.05 multiplied by that D minus one. So go ahead and write that in parentheses. Now for the dimes to get the total value, we're just gonna multiply the number of them multiplied by the value of them, just like we did for the nickels. I'm gonna leave the uh, zero off and write 0.1B. And then next for the quarters, the number of quarters is gonna be 25 cents times however many there are here. So that's gonna be 0.25. And let's write that in front of, and multiply that by the quantity of D plus seven. Finally, we can go ahead and say that since we know that the total value in the problem, they tell us the total value here is equal to $3.70, we can go ahead and put that and write 3.70 or 3.7 in that last column. We weren't told the number of the total number of coins here, so we kind of have to leave this blank. That would make this problem a little bit easier. So, but we actually don't need that because we're just gonna go ahead and use all this information here to go ahead and set up our equation. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So if we go ahead and add up the total value of the nickels plus the total value of the dimes plus the total value of the quarters, it should equal the total value of all of those together. So let's go ahead and write that down. We have 0 0.05 multiplied by the quantity of this D minus one. Okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and add the 10 cents for every dime, so 0.1 times D. And then finally, we're gonna go ahead and add that we're gonna get 25 cents or 0.25 times the number of quarters, which is represented by D plus seven, because we know that there are seven more than the number of dimes. So all of these added up is gonna equal the total value, which we are told is 3.7 or $3.70. Now let's go ahead and distribute this 0 0.05 to each of these terms in here. So 0 0.05 times D is just gonna be 0 0.05 D. And then we multiply that 0 0.05 times that negative one. So that's gonna be minus 0 0.05 still. We're gonna go ahead and add this 0.1D because we can't do anything with that, okay? Then we're gonna go ahead and do another bit of distributive property. Let's take this 25 cents times this and 25 cents times this, okay? So 25, 0.25 times D is just gonna stay as 0.25D. Just write it just like this. And then the 0.25, if we have seven of those quarters, that would be $1.75, so 1.75, and that would be equal to this 3.7 or $3.70. Now we can go ahead and combine some like terms. So we have this 0.05D, this positive 0.1D, and this positive 0.25D. If you add those all together, you can go ahead and pause if you need to think about it, but that will end up being 0.4D or 0.40. If you uh, go ahead and add the zero on, whatever you do there is fine. And then let's go ahead and see what other terms we can combine. Hopefully you can see these constants of this negative 0.05 and this positive 1.75, those constants could be added together. Combining that negative 0 0.05 and that positive 1.75, that's gonna be a total of positive 1.7, and that's all gonna be equal to that 3.7 on the other side of the equation. So now we just have a two-step equation, so it was a little bit more complicated, hopefully it's more simplified. We can go ahead and use the subtraction property of equality and take away 1.7 from both sides of the equation. If we go ahead and do that, notice how this uh, 1.7 and 1.7 are gonna make zero, so we don't need to write it. And on the left side, we have 0.4 multiplied by D. And on the right side, we have 3.7 take away 1.7, and that's just equal to two holes or just two. So at this point, we have a one-step equation, and we really want the coefficient for D to be one. So to get rid of that 0.4, that's multiplying by it. Let's go ahead and divide by 0.4 using the division property of equality. And so we divide that 0.4 divided by 0.4 is gonna be one or one D. We can drop the one though using the identity property and then two divided by 0.4 is going to be five. So we know the number of dimes here is going to be five. All right, so that's really important. Now that we have the number of dimes, we can take that D equals five and plug it in right here because that'll tell us the number of nickels. We could also go ahead and take that and plug it in right to this equation, right? So let's go ahead and write that down. We knew that N, the number of nickels, was equal to the number of dimes minus one, right? So we know the number of dimes is equal to five. So we can go ahead and substitute in and say, well, N is gonna be equal to this five take away one. And five take away one, that's gonna equal four. So at this point, we can identify that N or the number of nickels is equal to four. So let's go ahead and plug that in. And now we have the number of nickels. 
So finally, to find out the number of quarters, let's take the fact that the number of dimes is five and let's plug that in right over here. We could also look at this equation separately if you would like to. So let's go ahead and write that down, right? We have the number of quarters we knew is equal to the number of dimes or D and then we're gonna add seven. And then we know that D is now equal to five. So we can go ahead and write that Q is equal to that five. And then we're gonna go ahead and add seven. So five plus seven is going to be 12. So we know that the number of quarters is equal to 12. Alrighty, so at this point, we now have the number of each coin. It's completely not necessary, but if you wanna add these three together, that'll tell us the total. You could totally do that, but again, they're not asking you. So let's go ahead and just write our final answer here. In conclusion, Bella has four nickels, five dimes, and 12 quarters. So there you have two different practice problems on finding the number of coins given some different information. So hopefully you found it helpful. I totally recommend going ahead and trying to set up some tables and keep your information organized that way and setting up some equations. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And as always, keep up the great work and I'll see you in the next one.